Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, as I always say, it's good to be with you. My name is Graham Moore, and for those who don't know, and I don't mind if you don't, but I'm going to fill you in, I am a certified master of the Leadership Challenge, which is one of the most widely recognised leadership programmes globally. And I have two esteemed colleagues always with me, Mohammed Shukri and Phoebe Francis, and these two wonderful gentlemen are trained facilitators in the Leadership Challenge. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good morning from Bahrain. Greetings, Graham and Mohammed from Dubai. And it's still morning in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I am. So, gentlemen, I want to talk today about something that is often regarded as a necessity, yep, but also boring and annoying and a waste of time for many people. But we live with these, and I'm talking about meetings. So let's talk about how leaders, that's what we talk about, can motivate through meetings. What? What? How can this be? So why would leaders be able to conduct more effective meetings, Muhammad. Maybe they can't. Yeah, you know, meetings are there already, Graham, and we cannot escape meetings, which many people want to escape. Guess why? Because the meetings aren't attractive, aren't productive. Except for some meetings, I remember in my previous uh, company, I was longing, I was waiting for that meeting, and I discovered it's not me. All my colleagues we're waiting, you know, badly waiting for the meeting. And I discovered it was because of the man who was chairing the meeting. We didn't call him our department manager only, but also a great leader. So there you go. When the meetings happen, it was different when it was with this leader. So leaders need to make the most of their meetings and make their employees want to have that meeting, not escape from that meeting. Wouldn't it be wonderful if people are working in an environment where they want to go to the meeting, where they know that they're going to learn, where they know that they're going to gain valuable information. They may be motivated. They will know that it's not going to be a three-hour meeting, which was only supposed to be half an hour, uh, because that's mm -hmm. one of the other challenges with meetings. So, Phoebe, what are your views on leaders and meetings? Yeah, it, it takes me a few years back to one of my workplaces where, you know, meetings are a pleasure to have and a way of uh, process in which actions are planned well and executed in the workplace. So what I observed is the leader modeling the way in that space. One is making clear why are we meeting as simple as that and also highlighting what are we trying to achieve at the end of this so having that in the process and and also uh, it is used as a connection building process like five of us are there it is an initially we are we uh, modeling the way in which i want to stress that a connection is built between people checking in starting with what what are where are they how are they rather than immediately going so what i have seen and experienced is if we start building the connection and then appreciating the work which has been happened in the last uh, few days or weeks or months and then coming to what needs to be discussed and giving the opportunity for everyone in that process to bring in their voice not that i as a position holder, uh, taking the airtime in that space. So, you know, that process of um, modeling the way in which each stage of the meeting process, we are given the option and the opportunity to share what we feel. And that makes it more powerful. And that is my experience when we have leaders who understand how to run better meetings. Of course. Now, I'm sure we've all been in a situation where the manager arrives late into the meeting and 
kind of says, oh, sorry, I'm late. Okay, now, let's first item on the agenda. Uh, who's got the report to share with? Oh, okay, good, fine. Right? That's the start of the meeting. He's late. And he gets straight into the report, the numbers, the guy. Okay, this is what we need to do. I'm going to take a, a, a view right at the start of doing something quite the opposite to that. And this has been alluded to by both of you in what you've said a moment ago. Each have said this. But when the leader starts the meeting, he should be engaging with each person about something personal to them. And it can even be for each one, to, to him to say to each person, I want to hear something positive that's happened to each of you in the last week since we were together. Now, there's no pass. Mm -hmm. You each got to say something really positive. That then changed the, the climate. That changes the atmosphere if we're talking about positive things that have happened. Oh, wow, that happened to you. Wow, that's fantastic. This is building the relationship, of course, rather than just getting down to the nitty-gritty. And then when we start to talk about the important things of the meeting, that's also going to be changed by the mindset that's been set up up front. But, and we're not, I want to talk through this particular approach. We all know the five practices of exemplary leadership. Yeah. So let's just work through these now in talking about a meeting. Remember, we've got to have the monthly meeting, the weekly meeting, whatever it is, however it is, the time, the, the, whether it's every two weeks, it doesn't matter. So let's look at this in the in terms of the five practices of exemplary leadership. Phoebe already mentioned model the way. So let's look at that for just a moment. What can the leader do that's directly related to model the way? Yes. So uh, when you mentioned uh, the, the start, uh, Graham, a building rapport is very important and for leaders i think that, that when you give the floor uh, so to speak to someone to speak uh, other than you and you are not the one who is doing the uh, inauguration of the meeting or opening with a speech but and in, in, instead you're allowing others to speak and that is proving by practice to them that every voice is heard in our team all right and everyone is listened to so when one of you speaks everybody listens and when you praise every uh, input from everyone that means you're also showing them that we are motivating and we are accepting appreciating empowering each one of you in practice actually he is modeling the way by the way he is opening the meeting that i can think of one example and that was that was it yeah absolutely he is by his behavior he is modeling the way in terms of the the values that he's already talked about that they understand what his values are and the organization's values and his behavior in that me the meeting at the start and all through the meeting is a clear example of modeling the way so phoebe i'm going to give you number two inspire a shared vision the second practice so how can we incorporate inspire a shared vision into a meeting yeah, quite often, uh, Graham, uh, I, I was just remembering an incident in another organization where the leader come for the meeting and say, uh, okay, so I have decided to do this. So let us all proceed with that decision. And then the question is, do we need a meeting for that? If you are saying that we need to this, you say that uh, we, I have decided we will do this in uh, and we, we we don't have to waste time coming to meet and do these activities, sitting there, traveling to. So the inspiring a shared vision is something which, as uh, Graham and Mohammed mentioned, you know, how can we make that people come with their ideas? Who, uh, for example, it is also an example of group dynamics or team dynamics in, in a meeting, how people are interacting. Who is speaking? Who is speaking less? Who is speaking more? And that is where the placeholder, the leader of that specific meeting, ensuring that I am bringing everyone's voice. Otherwise, I don't. Have, if if I don't need to hear any one person's voice, then why am I inviting them? Why am I wasting the time of that resource in this place? So leaders should be aware of that process. And, and that is where the inspiration comes in. How can I inspire the persons who, who are with me 
to bring their best in that meeting. So that is uh, that is the uh, um, point of inspiration which each meeting holder should be having in his or her mind when I am coming to such a space and place. But it's also an opportunity for the leader to, to remind people about the vision of where we are going, the journey we are on. Reminding you, remember, the future is where it is at. We know that this organisation and this team is moving down the path to be able to achieve this. Together we're doing this. And what sort of things have we done in the last week that are leading us further to that vision? So we're inspiring. We're reminding people of what the vision is. So also, the, if I may, if no. I may add to inspire a shared vision, the shared part is important. Although we are having a project that we are heading to accomplish together, and maybe it's the project by the organization, but we have to do it. Still, I think every leader who chairs that meeting has that opportunity to stop a little and ask each member of the team this question. I found this very powerful. What is your goal of doing this project? What is your personal outcome, uh, personal takeaway that you want to add to you after this uh, project has been done? So I take the inputs from each one of them and suddenly everybody is inspired because he hears his or her colleague speaking about their ambitions and yes, I say, well, you know what? Let's add all these objectives to the main objectives. Let's get there uh, achieving all of our objectives, not just the organization's objectives. How cool is that? So stop for a moment and ask your team members, what is, what is it that you want out of this? No, hang on. Hang on a moment, Mohammed. Wow. You, 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 are you saying that the other team members are going to inspire other team members? I thought it was only the leader who inspired people. Of course they are going to inspire. <laughs> what a great example when they're talking about what we can achieve together. And if I'm sitting next to someone who I might be at the same level, so part of the same team, and he or she is talking so wonderfully about the inspired future that we're looking at, I am going to be excited about that as well. So it doesn't just have to come from the person who is the leader because we know leadership is everyone's business. So let's move on to the third practice, challenge the process. How can we incorporate challenge the process in the meeting to get a better result and have everybody feeling really engaged and enjoying and motivated by the meeting? Phoebe. Challenge the process. Yeah, c c continuing from uh, inspire a shared vision. You know, when when we when we are in as as you mentioned, you know, what what where are we going as a group as a team? And a, a simple question: What can we do differently? And imagine then the leader is giving the space. And yes, we we may have people in 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 our group who may be slightly extrovert who may be jumping in who may be introvert who may be slightly uh, hesitant to chip in now how can i invite in that process that imagine that if i am phoebe is a bit silent and not coming out phoebe what are your thoughts what kind of things may change our approach what can reduce our cost, what can have a higher impact. And this process of giving that opportunity to everyone. And I think there is also a space where, you know, you as a leader make giving a space for silence. You know, sometimes the silence in that room prompt people to reflect and come out with some of their thoughts. And there was another question, uh, which uh, which was uh, which I recently discovered in one podcast, that was, what is not being said so far? So, oh. so, sure. but but all of this is about the leader developing the culture in the in in the team of the organisation, so that everybody knows or should know that they are absolutely free and encouraged to come up with new ideas and think of a better way of doing things. It's like a mantra. How can we do it better? What if we did this? 
So in the meetings, it's, it should be talked about and encouraged. One little strategy yeah. that I often suggest is this, that the team, not every meeting, but as, but the, every little while, the, the leader running the meeting says, okay, next week, I want everybody to come to, the, come to the meeting with one, just one idea or suggestion that is challenging the process. One idea or suggestion where we're going to save money. One idea or suggestion where we're going to be able to be more productive. You tell me what we can do. I want one one thing from everybody. And that then has people yeah. thinking about, okay, next week I've got to come up with something and thinking about uh, challenging and finding better ways of, of doing things. It's got to Beautiful. be a regular thing, challenging the process. Mohammed, talk to me. Yes, may, let me add to this one also. I'm, I'm loving this part um, to um, challenge the process. You know, sometimes a leader must act as a facilitator of the discussion of the meeting. Facilitation skills, as we all know, because we are also uh, trainers, is where you throw the ball in the court and uh, ask others to do the next move. Okay, so sometimes the leader needs to act like act like clueless. Guys, we have this problem. When the moment you say we have a problem. The human's mind really jumps into uh, the creative mode, all right? Problem is that secret word that we all would love to solve puzzles. We are really uh, indulged with those uh, series that uh, talks about mystery, crime, and investigation, etc. And the human mind wants to solve. Uh, so we, what we do in educational standards is this. Tutor or a facilitator must plant at least one, we call it difficult question. Although you are surfing from module to module, so you have to surprise the team with so-called difficult question. The difficult question makes the smart people talk because there might, there might be people sitting back and not participating. This is too easy. This is too basic. I know this already. I saw this before. I heard this before. And then suddenly you throw that bomb. We have a problem and we need a solution. People will wake up and they will inter intervene and, and interact and contribute. Absolutely. And the forum that's created is one, as it's been repeated throughout this conversation, that is open for everybody to contribute in the meeting. Everybody must be an active contributor to the meeting. Here's another idea when it comes to challenge the process. Why wouldn't the leader say to the people in the meeting, I want you to come up with three ideas that are going to be going to improve the way we can conduct meetings. Next time we're together, I want three <laughs> ideas how, how we can improve meetings. What? No, that's fine. Yeah. Why not? Well, how about we look, it's always about looking for new ways. It's always about encouraging people to contribute. Now we move on to the fourth practice. Enable others to act. So how can we incorporate enable Can others? I start with this one? Can yeah. I start with the one? Can I, can I, can I, can I? <laughs> Yours, Muhammad. Yeah, I'm acting like you are, a, see, you are a great leader. You are running this meeting, the one we are running now, okay, and empowering us. So, so I'm very excited. See, in the meeting, sometimes you should give away some of the powers you have in the meeting, all right? Like, next time, the report will be done by you, Khaled, and Mike, you're going to chair the meeting on my behalf next time. And uh, you uh, and Ali, you should do this, you should do that. I'm just sitting and watching, all right? And and this is one of the simple ways, immediate ways, not need, does it need to be outside the meeting to give some power to the people there? Yes, you can share the meeting on my behalf. Yes, you can present on my behalf. Yes, you can run this discussion on my behalf. Why not? That's empowering. What a wonderful idea to have other people doing it. Why not give your power away and have others doing this because they grow as well, don't they? When you put them in absolutely. this, and they conduct the meetings, when they are doing this, absolutely. Phoebe, what a great idea. Phoebe. Yeah, to, to, to build on what Muhammad mentioned, you know, when when that happens, that, that delegation happens, it, it actually empowers that person to act. And not only that, it it is an opportunity where that 
person or in the hierarchical position to provide all the necessary support so that innovation happens in that space. Yeah. Change mm. happens much more faster. Yeah. And the participation of the entire organization will be higher. And we see engagement scores growing in that uh, in that process. So enabling is one of the key aspects of all uh, meetings and, and leaders should be happy to do that. Yeah. Giving that power to the team. But how many managers are fearful of doing that. If I give you the opportunity to run the meeting, who knows where you'll take it? We'll go right off the rails. No, no, I'm the person who's got to run this meeting. No, oh my gosh, this is this is how it should be. It's a wonderful suggestion to give your power away. It's one of the core elements of enable others to act so that the other people can do it. And guess what? They might do a wonderful job, even better than that particular person themselves could do. Muhammad. Yeah, you should also be careful of people hijacking the meeting like I am doing. So, but I have to say this. <laughs> okay. Still a learning, isn't it? When it if it if it does happen, exactly. it's still a learning. Exactly. You're doing exactly. This is the, our meeting is exactly a good example of how to empower people. I also remember that uh, one of the best leaders I worked with used to do this intentionally. Uh, gentlemen, we also have the fo following announcements. What announcements? It's only normal tasks that he has assigned some of the team players. He doesn't need to announce this in the meeting, but he intentionally says, Mahmoud is going to uh, pay a visit to so-and-so company on my behalf, and he's going to meet the leader of the safety department there. Yep. And, you know, um, uh, Mariam, she, I have asked her to do this project and she will do this and this. And we are watching every meeting. He is delegating something, but also amplifying it, announcing it. So guess what happens to us? Mouth watering. Everybody says, I want to work with this leader. I want that too. Pick me, pick me, pick me. Yeah, yeah. But he's, <laughs> how motivating is that particular act? To, uh, to the individuals who are named and also those who want to be given that opportunity uh, that, that this leader is doing. I think it's a fantastic way of enabling exactly. us to act, particularly when they the what they're being asked to do is lifting them up a little bit beyond what would otherwise be their normal level of, of function, function of their role. Right. I want this person. I've asked this person to go and see this general manager of this other company because I want him to, to stand in for me and take this responsibility. Oh, wow. Oh, OK. So it's not just, oh, go and see the 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 office boy and tell him this. No, it's validating <laughs> their ability by lifting them up and, and giving your power away. So let us come now to what some people think is their favourite of the five practices, and that is encourage the heart. So what can we do in meetings to encourage the heart? Phoebe. Yeah, Mohammed actually shared a beautiful example of encouraging the heart. So I was also in that room and Mohammed was saying, Mohammed, you go and meet that person in that organization, that safety head in that respective organization. So I was visualizing myself being there and seeing the happiness of the mm. person when acknowledged in that space, how that impact, not only him, as well as Mariam. I was also seeing Mariam in that space who felt happy about that. So these are simple acts and that intentionality, that, that is the word again, how can I intentionally encourage the heart of people in my space, in my meetings? Appreciating, we can again, it can be at, at the start of the meeting or it can be at the end of the meeting. So I, I think in, in, in leadership challenge, when uh, we were doing the facilitator certification, one aspect is you know how you uh, uh, reward members on the spot sure. and appreciate what we are that member is doing. And I think that small acts of appreciation, 
which is highlighting why that person is appreciated. And that brings a huge difference. I want to link yes. this into what Muhammad just said in regard to enable others to act. So let's just backtrack a little bit to Muhammad saying, I, as the leader, I want this person to do this on my behalf, right? That's basically what you were saying with those four examples. Correct, Muhammad? Yes, yes. In the next meeting, in the next meeting, I, as the person who's leading the meeting, so my well say, as we start off this meeting today, I just want to make reference to a phone call that I got during the week from one of our clients. And I think this is really important that I share this with you. This particular client had a visit from one of our team members and he was so impressed with what that team member did and mm. what the team member said. And he rang me particularly to say this. And I now want to say to Mariam, thank you so much because the, what you did made a big impression on the, our client. Beautiful. This ties Beautiful. to what you just set up in terms of encourage the heart. And it's like a payoff, isn't it? Because the yes, next also. Kind of, now, obviously, you can't make it up. It's got to be true. You've got to have, if, the, if he has had a call from the client saying, well, thank you, Mariam, really understood our needs or really understood. Then you do that in the meeting in front of everybody else, right? Yeah, yes, you can You can also, sorry to jump in, you can also say to Mariam, uh, halfway you can say, Mariam, why don't you continue and describe to us, you, tell us what happened with the client, all right? You you can make her speak. But you notice what I, what I, how I set that up. When I started telling that example, I didn't reveal who we were talking about until yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I held that back. Because the other four people, if they've been mentioned, are going to be waiting to hear their name. <laughs> <laughs> then you say, Mariam is the, oh, wow, wow. This is so, it's just a bit of a strategy that then mm -hmm. has them feeling fantastic. Yes? Yeah. Also, uh, a leader can compile some of the achievements even done outside the scope of work, oh. but achieved by employees, like someone who just got uh, their master's degree, someone who got recognized in the company elsewhere for doing something. Let's compile all of them and why not uh, celebrate them again, but this time within the team. So, yeah, take a photo with them, make a yeah. A formal recognition and then put them on the notice boards. How beautiful those meetings will be if you just take every small and big achievement, bring it up there in the meeting, celebrate it with everyone, even if it's not within the objectives of this year. Yeah. Come on. This is the beautiful team and you are a beautiful leader. Really, really good. I, Here's another. Let me just... I, 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 and then I'll come back to you. But allied to that, one of the strategies that I often suggest is that the team leader will, or the manager, the leader, will say, okay, I want everybody in this room to think now of what's happened in the last few days and identify someone in the team who you saw doing something really good that we should all recognise right now. Wow, wow. And, and you know, you have might have someone saying, look, I just saw the way... Muhammad or Ali dealt with this but with this customer and it was just done so well. And I, I was so impressed while, while I was watching. And team members sharing good things that other team members do is really, it really warms the heart of the people who they are working with. It's a colleague giving this comment, not just the leader, but a colleague. And this helps powerful. everyone. It's very powerful. Really rewarded. Phoebe, I cut you off. Well, I didn't cut you off. I asked you to wait. Now tell us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was actually uh, remembering a story in one of my workplaces where every, every week, uh, you know, on the day before weekend, we are given an opportunity to meet as a department 45 minutes where first thing is people come, have a cup of tea, coffee, snacks. And the next aspect is people can appreciate other members of the team for the work they have done in the previous week. And it actually was a very, very encouraging moment and inspiring moment where, uh, you know, all kind of work, small, big, whatever it is, it is appreciated. And people, people, we can see the smiles which actually yeah. translate. And at the end of the week, people go with a very happy heart yeah. for the weekend and, and makes the workplace 
uh, encouraging and inspirational to all. But if you incorporate this in the meeting, this is part of making the meeting a pleasurable uh, event rather than a chore. What's the? I don't know what the word in Arabic is for chore, Muhammad. What do you know what I mean by chore? It's got to be done. It's boring. Yes, What's it's Arabic? like a duty. Wajib, wajib. Wajib, wajib. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I'm happy with that. But I've got to do it. So it's you know we don't like going to meetings. I want meetings to be a benefit for everybody. And as you said at the start of our discussion today, Muhammad, where people want to come to the meeting because they know that their leader is going to have them feel motivated. And what we've talked about will give people in the meeting an opportunity to yeah. motivate others. Gentlemen, I am always pleased to spend this time with you. And I learn from you as well. And I hope that people who are part of this also learn and incorporate what we talk about in their working life and their personal life. So let's just wrap this up by saying if anybody listening now has any questions, any feedback, any comments at all, please send me an email, graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at leadershipchallengemiddleeast.com, and I will personally respond. We look forward to connecting with you. Gentlemen, I look forward to being with you again next week at this time. Thank you very Thank you. much for your wisdom today. Thank you, Muhammad. Friends, make, make sure you subscribe uh, and follow. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Phoebe. Have a great weekend. You. you too.